plug in what I know x now equals. So again, I'll underline it in purple and then I'll copy it in purple. We now found in step one that x equals 6 minus 2y. Check this out. What's cool about what I have here? If you're thinking that we only have one unknown, you are right on. Um, we know how to solve equations with just one unknown. So this is the algebra we've been practicing this whole year. So I'm just going to do this part pretty quickly. Minus 6y minus 4y equals 28. Do you see what we're going to do next to get y alone and solve for that one unknown? Combine like terms. So we have a minus 10y when I combine negative 6y and negative 4y. We still have an 18 over here equals 28. All right, do you see what I have to do next? You got it. Subtract 18 from both sides. So I'm left with negative 10y equals 10. Therefore, y equals negative 1. So if I know y, am I finished? You're right, we are not quite finished yet. Um, so we need to take what we know for y and plug it into one of our equations. So I'm going to scroll up and see if I have a good equation for solving for x. Um, let's see here. If we look at this equation, x is not alone there, so that's a little bit of work. x is not alone there, that's a little bit of work. Check this out, x is alone there. So that's going to be my easiest equation to work with. So actually, it might, I'll just copy it down here. So x equals 6 minus 2y. Let's scroll back down to step 3. 6 minus 2y. And we just found that y is negative 1. So wherever there's a y in my equation, I'm going to leave a blank. And I know I'll fill that in with negative 1. So x equals 6 minus, multiplication first, um, negative 2 times negative 1 is a positive 2. So x equals 8. So can you write our final solution from substitution? If you are getting negative, or 8 is our x value, our y value is negative 1, you are right on track. Um, Another way you could check this is by using the method we used yesterday. Graph it. Graph these two lines. Do they cross at the point 8, negative 1? Remember, a solution is where the two lines intersect. All right, let's look at one more example. Um, the good news in this example is that we're starting off with an equation that has a variable already alone. So we're good to go. So now I'm going to copy my other equation over, and this time where there is a y, I'm going to leave myself a blank. And what goes in for y? What do we know y equals? 2x minus 4. Remember, when we're multiplying um, multiple terms, we have to use parentheses. So here's the fun part. We get to zoom through our algebra. Um, before I do that, what's cool about what we see in step 2 here? If you're thinking that we just have one unknown, you are absolutely right. Um, this is cool because we know how to solve equations with one unknown. All right. So now I can combine some like terms. Uh, let's see here. I'm left with negative 6 plus 6, which cancels out. Um, and that gives me negative 12 equals negative 12. When is negative 12 equal to negative 12? Always. So we don't have to even continue this. This is one of those situations that has infinite number of solutions. So you might just actually say the answer is infinitely many solutions. That's a symbol for infinite. Um, what would this look like on a graph if it's going to cross infinitely many times? Well, if you think about it, these two lines to cross infinitely many times would actually have to be right on top of each other. So if we rewrite that first equation, or the second equation, to look like slope-intercept form, it should be the exact same equation because 